So it seems to me that NFTs at this point are sort of like the Kardashians. Everybody agrees they contribute nothing to society whatsoever. Everybody kind of hates them and thinks that they're gross. And yet they're still everywhere. And in fact, they are still being added to games and franchises that some of us have grown to know and love. Most notably, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Now listen, I actually predicted this months ago. I looked at a website that Ubisoft owns, which is called Ubisoft Quartz. And if you go here, you can see that on the website, which promotes their NFT program they were working on last year, there's a big empty space here that looks to be a place to put a game like Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is what I'm guessing was supposed to be here. And then there's a whole debacle with an adults only rating. The game was delayed, all this stuff. I'll link my video on that whole concern conspiracy theory in the description box. The point is Ubisoft has gotten pretty deep into the NFT thing because they're constantly looking for new ways to make easy cash money. And this is just another example of them hopping on the latest trend, at least as far as they see it, to try and make some quick cash. However, this does not seem to be the same sort of plan that was described with this digits program, which was sort of like NFTs mixed with skins that you could in theory bring to multiple games if you wanted, but it was never really clear what it was. These are actual 3D printed collectible statues that are then polished. So they're kind of like figurines within this resin epoxy looking thing. And then they have these QR codes and a stamp of authenticity on the corner. And effectively they're just collectibles that can be paired with software. And I know what you're thinking, Luke, isn't that just what Amiibo are? <laughs> and I mean, yeah, kinda. Like they're physical collectibles, but they can be used in video games to like, have characters enter a game as well so i i guess i've never been an amiibo guy i don't own any i don't really have any interest in owning any if i'm being frank but you know what some people like them they get a cool little collectible statue and then they get to use that in a game to get certain perks or abilities and things it's just kind of fun the difference with these 3d printed collectibles that ubisoft is putting out here is that they are directly tied into NFTs that are unique to each and every collectible. If you go to the website of this company, Integral Reality Labs, which seems to be brand new. They have a bunch of stuff like Marketplace, Soul Customizer, all coming soon. The website is like still in the early stages of being built. They just announced this like an hour ago, so it's very fresh. But if you scroll down on this website, you can actually see a little explanation of what these things are. So let's see, let's try and keep an open mind, okay? Let's not do the like clickbaity thing where it's like, oh, NFTs are a scam, re. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna try to be level-headed about it as much as we can be. Because while NFTs are extremely common in scams, and so is like crypto and all these other things, they are not inherently by definition as a technology, a scam. It's not like, you know, a series of code that's meant to drain your bank account. It could be used for something cool. I don't think it's practical in the gaming space. I haven't heard any pitches for it to be implemented in a way that it would actually improve a gamer's experience. But you know what? Maybe they figured out a way. Maybe this is the thing that makes NFTs cool. Maybe, pro probably not, but maybe. Let's try to keep an open mind and a level head and look at this as fairly as we can. As you see, they described why are IRL smart collectibles trademark so unique? Well, it's a bond between the digital and physical worlds, whatever that means. Own a piece of your favorite game, both as a physical and digital collectible, combined into a one-of-a-kind smart collectible. Again, like I said earlier, it's like a statue that's 3D printed mixed with an NFT that can be used with a mobile app, but they do go into more detail. Smart collectibles, trademark, are entirely customizable. Customize your digital soul traits customize your outfit weapon and pose and forge your digital soul into a unique smart collectible okay so it's like custom statues that's actually that could be cool i mean if all this is is like a collectible for assassin's creed fans that does like a 3d printed statue where you can choose the outfit and the pose and stuff that's just like a cool 3d printed licensed collectible to put on like your shelf that's not terrible what else do they say unique interactions through the irl companion app awaken your smart collectible trademark 
uh, complete achievements, level up, and follow recipes to forge even more unique smart collectibles. Okay, a bond between the digital and physical world. Smart Collectible offers a unique bond of digital and physical collectibles, seamlessly merging the two worlds through IRL's proprietary 3D printing technology. We embed the digital soul into a physical smart collectible minted on the blockchain, ensuring its authenticity. But they actually go on to describe the process of getting one of these things. They say each soul can be customized with traits exclusive to each rarity tier with a rarity score system. So presumably, if you wanna buy one of these things, you go on and you will watch for the drop to release to purchase a digital soul, which is just an NFT. Choose a rarity, which I'm guessing the higher the rarity, the more expensive it is, because the higher rarity tier, the more trait customizations are available to you. So if you pay more, you can tweak it more, okay? Customize your digital soul's traits, choose outfits, weapons, and poses, then forge your digital soul into a unique smart collectible, and then awaken your smart collectible through our IRL companion app, interact with your digital soul, and engage in rewarding collector experience. The thing with this, like, if all this is, is just a way to craft a unique 3D printed statue of Ezio or, or somebody, that, like, that's cool. I don't understand why NFTs have to even be a part of it. The whole idea with this is it's tied into this, like, system where you create your own, and then when you pull it up on your, your phone through the app, you can see the collectible and I guess show that it's real. I mean, do they really think that there's that many people that are gonna be making fake versions of this? Like, honestly, with a lot of this stuff, it just doesn't make sense because the whole point of the NFT seems to be to prove that it is genuine and not a ripoff or not a scam. It's not like a fake reproduction from some random factory in China, it's real. But like how many people are going to be creating fake, like epoxy resin coated looking 3D printed statuettes. Probably not that many, especially if it's a proprietary 3D printing process as they claim. Like as a collector, I can understand why you'd wanna have the identifiers to prove that no two collectibles are the same. But frankly, I don't know why that has to be tied into the blockchain. You know, this this got sent to me. It's like a, a Orlog kit for the one and only Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And uh, it's really, really cool, very well made. And you can see on this, for one, it's like a very custom box. It was very nice of them to send me. But on the back, it has a label. Number 25 out of 500. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as a collector of things, I think that this does the job of like demonstrating, okay, it was 25 out of 500. That's cool. This thing is so elaborate. I don't think you're going to see many fakes generated. And it's not like we're trading World Series baseballs or, or like Nike tennis shoes or something. We're trading and we're collecting things that are already like rare, I guess, but they're not so in demand that they're just flooded with fakes and ripoffs. Call me crazy. I don't think like a little 3D statue, it looks like maybe three inches by three inches. I don't think that is going to have so many fakes generated that you have to have a blockchain identifier for it to protect your investment in this collectible. I just don't think that's practical. Honestly, just a little stamp on the back that says what number it is, is probably good enough. So then you have to ask, what's the point? Why are they doing all of this crap with NFTs if just selling like cool customizable 3D printed statues would get the job done. And it goes back to the core concept of NFTs, which is why it appeals to somebody like Ubisoft so much. And that is because in concept for a lot of these companies, NFTs represent the next wave of crypto, the next big way that they can make easy free money from speculators and people that are basically gambling while convincing themselves they're investing because they don't know what they're doing. And the whole concept behind like this Ubisoft Quartz platform was that they wanted you to have digits that you could claim, use in games, and then sell to other people. And the whole concept is that they initially sell it to, you know what, hold on, we're gonna use MS Paint for this. Okay, so at the top we have Ubisoft, and you'll have to forgive my writing. I don't have a tablet, I'm just using my mouse. So we have Ubisoft at the top. The whole concept behind NFTs is that they wanted to be able to sell uh, let's put like player one is right here. They wanted to be able to sell this person an NFT. This NFT was going to be worth, say, 
uh, ten dollars. Okay, probably they're hoping more than that, but let's just say it's worth ten dollars. That's how much Ubisoft gets for it. Then they want you to be able to sell that NFT to player number two. And because this whole thing is built on speculation and just assuming prices will rise, even though the only way prices rise in a situation like that is if there's a bigger sucker that comes along willing to pay more. But setting that aside for now, if player one was able to sell this to player two for say a hundred dollars for some reason, maybe it was a skin used by a famous streamer or something, it's magic, I don't know. What Ubisoft wanted to be able to do is to take a, say, 10% cut of this $100 sale. So in effect, this guy, player one, is only going to take home $90 going to him, and Ubisoft is going to take home a further 10 because they got 10% of that sale, right? And then the same thing will happen as player two sells this down to another person. So player two sells it to player three, gets 90 bucks, $10 goes back. But one of the promises of some of these NFT platforms is that they wanted to make sure the original holders would always get their cut as well. So when player one sold it to player two, they got 90 bucks. But when player two sells it to player three, they actually also get a 10% cut. So this goes away and this becomes instead $80 and $10 goes back to this person. Now this sounds great, right? Because it's just free money. If you buy an NFT, it goes off and gets sold 15 times. You're making money each step of the way. Ubisoft's making money each step of the way because they own the marketplace that's selling it. It's just free money for everybody, right? Well, let's draw out a few more examples and I'll show you why this doesn't work. The problem is that pretty quickly, this starts to just turn into a, um, you know, a wee bit of a pyramid <laughs> because the people at the top of the pyramid are making all the money. The person at the very top's making tons of it and the people at the bottom make nothing except every single person above them is making a profit on them being willing to lose their money. So this whole system only works so long as there's a sucker willing to come along and throw money into the system that gets chopped up and eaten by the people on top. Now, Anybody with two brain cells to rub together can recognize that this is what's known as a pyramid scheme. Or another thing you might've heard of is a Ponzi scheme. This is what a lot of like really famous uh, white collar criminals have been convicted of practicing. It goes back to a guy named Charles Ponzi. And basically the idea, oh yeah, and Bernie Madoff who stole like billions upon billions of dollars doing this for decades. But basically what happens is you have one person at the very top that's paying other investors a little bit beneath him with all of the money and contributions from the people on the very bottom who hope to one day be in that next tier above it. And it only works so long as there's new people at the bottom of that pyramid willing to throw money into the system to flow up to the people at the top. This is why NFTs in pretty much every form I've ever seen them pitched are very scammy. And it's because there's no profit incentive. There's no actual system here for generating any revenue for anybody except the people at the very top who stand to gain all of the money and the people underneath them are left like, okay, well, like, what do I get? What, what's in it for me? And this whole scheme with these NFTs just doesn't make sense. Like if this is the whole pitch, customizable, like 3D printed collectible things, that, like that's cool. Why are the NFTs tied to it? And it's because they want to tie it into this app to try and make some quick money. And you can see they're doing drops of different rarities. They haven't announced how much these are going to be. I would guess they're in the realm of hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. And it just screams of lazy, quick cash grab, which is why everybody's so sick and tired of NFTs. Because every time we see anything related to NFTs, it's always in the form of a quick, lazy cash grab slash scheme that's really deceptive with people doing the business that don't want to be super upfront with how this is working or why it's working the way it is. Now, to be clear, it could be the case that this is not actually a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. It could just be that they're cool 3D customizable collectibles and that's it. And if that's what this is, cool. I have no problem with cool collectibles. That's fine. However, the integration with NFTs, as far as I can tell, would only be done as a quick 
method of trying to generate profits using this platform that they've already invested millions upon millions upon millions of dollars into. I heard some numbers that said that they were putting as much as $100 million into this Ubisoft court system, all told. Apparently, it's just completely died out already. People are just not interested at all. And now they're shifting into this new strategy of these 3D printed collectibles, which at least you get something physical that's kind of cool. But like even here, I didn't even notice this before. You see the 001 out of 500. So there's only 500 made. That's exactly what's on that Orlog kit behind me. Like, why do you need the custom code? And then uh, like, I don't, I don't get why you need NFTs. It doesn't make any sense. This is all thing when they're pitch NFTs, it's like, oh, you can have unique skins, dude. That's already a thing. Or, oh, you can sell skins to other players. You can already do that. Look at CSGO and all these other games that have been doing that for ages. That's nothing new. You don't need NFTs to tie into it. That's why it's so clear that this whole thing is just built on trying to hop onto the latest trend the latest thing of like oh well it's web 3 what is web 3 it's cool like, nobody can actually explain why you need nfts and something like this which is why it leaves such a bad taste in everybody's mouth because it's clear this is just a quick cash grab and listen i don't know if these things are going to sell well i really hope they don't sell well if you're watching this video for the love of god don't just just don't you're going to just encourage this okay just even for the memes don't buy it but I mean, it begs the question, why are they even doing this? Like, why is Ubisoft doing this if it's so clear that this is just hopping on a dying train? Like, everybody knows NFTs suck. NFTs have been roundly mocked in the gaming industry. Entire games were crafted around NFTs and blockchain and Web3. That was like a whole thing a year ago. And it's completely died out because everybody agrees it's stupid. And then here comes Ubisoft like, oh, well, we have something to show you. And I think what it is, it's an example of their poor management. This is why I wouldn't recommend ever investing in Ubisoft so long as the Guillemot brothers are at the helm, especially Yves Guillemot. And it's specifically because there's a, a fallacy in investment known as the sunk cost fallacy. And it's pretty straightforward. Basically, it's just the concept that if you're in too deep, into an investment or something it's also really common in gambling somebody's like oh i've already spent a hundred dollars playing craps at this table or i've already spent a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars playing the slot machine i'll win eventually i'm, I'm already in too deep i just got to keep going that's a fallacy that's not how that works if it's clear that you should get out because this investment or this thing that you're doing is bad and will not return any favorable profit whatsoever, whether that's in the form of money or enjoyment, whatever, you should just get out. It's pretty straightforward. But people naturally have this inclination when they're in deep in something to try and write it out. I'm in too deep. How often have all of us said that? I'm in too deep now. I got to finish it. And that's the problem with Ubisoft doing all of this stuff. They've spent so much money building these NFT systems because they were hoping it would be a quick way for them to make money after blowing all of these other projects that can't generate revenue or uh, aren't profitable for years and years, canceling countless projects and things. And because they were just trying to hop on the latest trend, they missed it. It wasn't ever really a thing to begin with, but everybody agrees now NFTs suck. But they're saying to themselves, we're in too deep. We already spent so much money on this. We got to just ride it out, figure it out. Maybe these things will surprise us. Maybe these will make a ton of money and this will be the next Amiibo. Who knows? But this is why like the management at Ubisoft is widely considered to be lackluster and poor. And it's because they regularly commit these pretty basic oopsies on the grand scheme of business or even just logic or something just doesn't make sense. And yet they double down on it so hard. It's infuriating. And listen, I'm hoping that Assassin's Creed Mirage is awesome. I hope that the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise is bright. I have the Assassin's Creed chair, as you can see, like I like the franchise. I love it dearly. However, it's no mystery that the management at Ubisoft is lost and they are trying desperately to find any sort of quick get out of jail free card they can to dig themselves out of the hole that they've dug over the last five, six years by just mismanaging the company. And I don't think NFTs are going to be that fix. And so I would expect them to start looking for that fix through heavy monetization of other franchises. And what's their biggest franchise that could potentially generate the most revenue to dig them out of this hole? Assassin's Creed. <laughs> 
People are like, Luke, you're too skeptical about these games. You gotta lighten up, dude. It's probably gonna be okay. And listen, I would love to to be like that, to just vibe and chill. I would love that. Life would be so easy. Uh, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Like when things look bad, I'm gonna tell you they look bad. When Ubisoft consistently screws up and does stupid stuff, I'm gonna tell you they're doing something stupid. I'm not gonna lie to you. And in this case, this NFT stuff is freaking stupid. I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. I think we all should be able to agree that this is just kind of dumb. It's a cool collectible. It looks cool. I don't know why it has to have NFTs involved, but it, like this whole thing is just kind of stupid. And if these are the decisions that they're making going into Assassin's Creed Mirage, it gets me more worried than confident in their ability to make intelligent monetization decisions with regards to Assassin's Creed as a franchise. I've said before, Ubisoft is getting desperate because they've made a lot of mistakes in recent years. And as a result of that desperation, you're gonna start to see them do stuff that just doesn't make sense, that's very stupid, and that pisses off a lot of their fan base. And I would say that this probably is the first sign of what's to come. I would expect them to do a lot more stuff like this in the next few months. And I've been right about a lot of this stuff because uh, often these things are very easy to see. Notably, I predicted the Microsoft acquisition of ZeniMax. I predicted all of this NFT crap, Ubisoft's complete collapse in the last year or so. And I uh, also, of course, predicted this NFT thing and doubling down through Assassin's Creed in the NFT space. And I would expect them to do it even more, maybe not necessarily in the NFT space, but if you think Mirage is not going to have some heavy monetization, I would say you are out of your mind so uh buckle up and wait for that i hope hope i'm wrong but unfortunately i've been right a lot recently <laughs> but that's all for me i'm gonna go and uh finish my margarita i mean my water that's in here um and relax and chill outside because it's a beautiful rainy day so i'm gonna go do that play some more tears of the kingdom maybe some more jedi survivor and vibe let me know what you're playing in the comment section below i'm interested in hearing that and if you want to come hang out with me live head over to luke stevens live just search up in the search bar luke stevens live here on youtube i stream all the time and we have a second channel filled with live stream clips and things that just don't fit on the main channel so come by and say hi i would love to hang out with you oh and by the way if you like merch stuff and you would like to support me i do have more items for sale on uh, the lukestevenstv.com merch store so uh go check it out this is the proud skeptic mug that's available there in addition to t-shirts of the same designs and some others go check it out i also figured out that i can do like basically cameo thank you videos if you place a merch order so if you place an order on lukestevenstv.com i will send you a little thank you video filmed on my uh, i almost dropped it on my uh my phone so i'll do a little selfie video for you Super fun. I didn't know I could do that until like last week. So I sent a bunch of thank you videos to people who ordered stuff like back in January. But you know what? Better late than never. But anyway, all of this to say Ubisoft is blowing it. Assassin's Creed is dying slowly. And I hope you have a great day. Much love. I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses.